Hendrix and today I'm going to be doing a presentation on canes, crutches, and walkers. So I'm going to start out with crutches and specifically crutch types. There are quite a few of them so I'm just going to be highlighting a couple of them. First one is the axillary crutch which is used for temporary, um, temporary impairments rather than long-term use and is by far the most common type. Another type of crutch is the axillary, no that's not the axillary, the forearm crutch or the elbow crutch, which is used to balance out the weight or even out the weight in the hands, wrists, and arm, rather than just placing as much pressure on the hands and wrists alone. Another type is the hands-free crutch, which allows you to get into smaller spaces um, than most of the other ones and um, prevents you from having nerve damage in the upper um, body, which is an upside to them. The only downside for them, is, uh, for this type of crutch, is that it can only be used if you have impairments below the knee, and um, that's one of the cons to that. Moving on to placement and um, positioning of crutches, I'm going to be using some axillary crutches for this demonstration. Um, with them, you want the crutch to line up with the height of your body. So um, to adjust them, you can adjust them at the base and at the hand grip and they should line up so that you have about two to three fingers width in between the top of the crutch and your armpit. And crutches should not be held up against your body, but they should be um, held in the tripod position, which is um, the two bases of the crutches should be about four to six inches in front of you and about two inches away from your body so that you're not hugging the crutch and tripping yourself up. Going from there, I'm going to talk about the types of um, gates. And to start, you would always use the tripod position um, while you are going through these gates. So the first one is the two-point gate. And that is it's called, so called because it has two points of contact, the crutch and your feet. So assuming that my injured side is my right side, I would move the injured side crutch and my foot in tandem. So moving them along with each other. And then my injured foot and the left side moving forward. And that is the two point gait. The next one, which is the most common type of gait, is called the three point gait. And that is because the crutches and your injured foot form one or uh, two points of contact, and then your non injured side is considered the other point of contact. So crutches move forward along with your injured foot, and then you move your foot, your non injured foot, forward past. And that is the three point gate. The four point gate is similar to the two point gate in that it has about the same motion except that each um, point of contact with the ground is uh, done separately. So the first one, I would move the injured side, which I'm using my right side as my injured side. I would move that crutch forward first, and then I would step forward my non injured foot, which is my left foot and then the crutch, uh, my left crutch would move forward, and then my injured foot, which would be my right foot. And that is the four-point gait. The next one I'd like to talk about is the swing two gait, which, as it says, you move the crutches forward, and then you swing to, that, to the point of the crutches. And that's shown there. And then the last one is called the swing through gait, you swing, your crutches would move forward and then your feet would both swing past the crutches. And that is the swing through gait. Next, I'd like to talk about sitting and standing in crutches. First, your, um, your injured foot should be out in front of you and you should back up until you can feel the um, chair against the back of your leg and the crutch should move to, you should move the crutches over to your injured side, holding them in place and reaching for the armrest, and then sitting, sitting down, being careful to note that your foot is always up and out of the way. 
and then to stand, scoot forward in the chair, and then push yourself up using your crutches in one on your injured side again, and your other hand to push yourself up. And then you would move the one crutch back to its original side and get into that tripod position again. Um, then the next thing I'd like to discuss is um, the uh, standing, or not standing, sorry, um, stepping up the stairs and going down the stairs. And a good way to remember this is good up and bad down, as I've heard before, said by many others. Um, so that's in reference to moving your good foot first when you go up the stairs and then moving your bad foot first when you're going down the stairs. And this is the case with either handrails or not. If you have handrails, you're going to place the crutches in one hand and use them as a support on your injured side or um, on the side that doesn't, that you're not holding the handrail. And if you don't have a handrail, then you're using both crutches as your base of support. Either way, you are, when going up, you're going to step up with your good foot using your base of support as the crutches, and, the, and if you have a handrail, using the handrail, and stepping up, and then moving the crutches up with your injured foot, and when going down, your injured foot should be out in front of you, and the crutches should be placed on the lower step, and you either use the handrail or the crutches, you hop down. And that is the kind of the principle with crutches, and it is the same for um, canes as well. The next thing I'd like to talk about is um, cane play, or actually the types of canes rather. First, um, the one I'm going to be using here is called a quad cane or a multiple point cane. Um, because it has different points of contact with the ground, but there are also a couple other types such as the um, small, uh, single point cane, which can be in a folding form or not, and it has many hand grips as well. And then there are, um, there's also the walking cane or the probing cane as it is also called, and that's mainly used for those who have visual impairments and need to be aware of objects around them. So, with walking with the cane, this one is, oh, I should start out and say that you want it to line up again with your height, and to ch do that, you would um, change the height down here at the bottom. It has different places that you can move it up and down. And with this, you want it to be about, about two inches away from your foot to the side of you, and um, also about midway between your foot and, uh, between the front of your foot and uh, about midway between or in the middle of your foot. Um, so with this, the cane should line up with the bend in your wrist. Also the walker does as well. Or it can also line up with the greater trochanter, which is kind of midline hip. So with this, you wanna make sure that the placement lines up with the wrist so that there is a 15 to 30 degree bend in the elbow when standing straight. And when walking, you want the cane to be on your strong side so that you can move it in tandem with your weak side. So you move forward, putting more of your weight on the cane itself than on your weak side and then step forward with your strong side. And that would be walking with a cane. To sit down again, you would also back up to the chair until you feel it at the back of your legs, and then making sure that the cane's out of the way, you would feel for the armrest and sit down. And then standing up, you would scooch forward and lift yourself up and then grab the cane at the, while you find your balance. And then you can move along from there. And that is canes. It also has the same principle um, with walkers and crutches. They are all similar in that with sitting down and standing up. So on to um, walkers. 
This one that I'm using is a bit short for me because I wasn't able to adjust it, but where you would adjust it is at the legs. Each of them have different places that you can kind of push in to adjust. And as I said before, with like the canes, you should be able to line up with the bend in your wrist or the greater tr trochanter. And there are a couple different types of canes, I mean walkers. <laughs> Um, there is the, um, I'm just going to highlight a couple because some of these are wheel wheeled and others are um, folding, but there is the Hemi Walker, which is a single use walker or a single sided use walker, single handed. So it gives you more support than a cane, but um, it's not quite the size of a walker itself. Also, I should mention that with any of these mobility devices, you want to be looking forward and not at the ground like I was because um, you want to be able to see what's in front of you as you're walking along and not tripping over things. So when walking with these, you would place this about four to uh, six inches in front of you and then step forward, putting more of your weight on the walker itself. And as I get, again, this one is short for me. It's too low. Um, but this is one of the types of canes, or types of walkers. Uh, it obviously doesn't have wheels. There are a type, the Rollator is a four wheeled walker. And if you have any of the rolling ones, you need to make sure that when you're sitting down or standing up that you have locked the brakes. Um, I'd also like to talk about um, weighing a patient with these um, walkers. When weighing a patient, you the walker is moved to the side of you and they would hold a little bit of support and if there's a bar, holding onto the bar as they step up, you can also use another person as support or more than one if possible and that's generally what they recommend if I've also seen people just move it to the side as a side thing and then walk up but those are when you have more agility as well and that would be when weighing a patient with all of um, with the canes and walkers you would want to use a gait belt if possible if not then I would suggest make do and help the patient along if um, when necessary. Um, now I'd like to move to things to prevent falls because that's definitely prevalent with any of these devices you have a chance of falling. Um, and uh, some of the things to prevent falls is to make sure you're not wearing any shoes that have heels or have a very low heel to them and making sure that the areas around you are clean and uh, that they're also well lit and also making sure to wear clothing that's not dragging on the floor um, keeping in mind that you're always looking straight ahead and not at the ground and also um, when getting up from bed maybe having somebody help you along if uh, when needed or having a little more support there for you just in case Otherwise, uh, take it slow. Um, and um, I forgot to mention things on nerve damage. That's generally focused on uh, for walkers, or not walkers, for crutches, because that's the general one that gets, that has nerve damage. So um, for that, remembering that you do not push, uh, you're not using your armpits as your support and you want to have a proper adjustment of height for that. Um, yeah, everything needs to be properly adjusted to your height, regardless of whether it's a crutch, a cane, or a walker. And um, being aware of your surroundings can definitely help uh, in preventing falls. Um, if you have any questions or would like to talk about it further, I'd love to discuss it with you. Thank you for your time and see you later.